about 23 companies um, found this valuable, so they signed up. Looks like probably most of you showed up. Great. Um, this workshop was, was really geared around uh, kind of getting down and dirty and figuring out what your plan would look like. Uh, we originally designed this for six to ten customers, and then we would be active with all six to ten, and we would figure out what that plan looked like for the for those. Um, but I said, let's bring it. Come one, come all. 26, 30, 50 companies. I don't care. What we'll do is we'll focus on just a handful, and we'll learn from those going forward. I asked you for in their in the bio, in the profile, um, whether you mind sharing your company name. Um, like I said at the beginning, I gave you all fictitious names here because I wasn't sure if you knew exactly what you were signing up for. So to be safe, um, you know, they, uh, what's our slogan? Microsoft's built on trust. Um, so <laughs> um, I'm going to show you uh, seven customers. Um, and, and you can tell me if one of you if it looks familiar and you're okay with sharing the company name, that would be fine with me. Uh, that said, uh, what the way I picked the seven customers was we use a product code called Quality Dashboard for to monitor and manage the quality of your Skype and Teams deployment. And the quality mostly around real time media. So calling, you know, video, audio, desktop sharing, and things like that. Many customers say, well, we don't use it for, for meetings or calling, so why do we need to worry about this? Well, do you desktop share? Yeah, of course we do. Cool, then you need it. Because that's real time media as well. Okay. If that doesn't work right, your users are going to tell you. And it should. So, and it's so much better than Skype. So, um, that said, uh, I'm going to start with the first one. And the, the, the top left hand six here, watch this, the cool little, yeah. These up here are all the questions that you asked. Some asked, answer very little, what's your plan progress? Getting started, fine, fair enough. We'll figure out what would that be. Um, but I broke this into basically uh, three parts. The completion date is the one I really, really wanted to know. There's a, the employee size in the top right hand corner, so you should probably recognize yourself. Especially if you type this, you'll know your own words. Um, but the uh, the about us, I could tell that it was somebody in, in engineering or uh, in IT because they gave me a technical answer to who are you, what's your organization, and so they gave me what they thought was relative to what we would need to know for this session, and that's fine. Um, my guess is Lab Test Inc. Um, they don't sell Skype for business for a living. Right, but that's okay. Um, great uh, communication communication tools. So they're not they're in a Skype for business on prem shop. Cool uh, collab tools. They use SFP on prem. Okay, um, that all depends on how you define collaboration. If you mean going into meetings and you're all talking together, fair enough. I guess that's collab. Um, people would think Teams, Slack. Facebook at work, those are collab products. But if you've never really had those, or maybe some pockets in your organization were using uh, that, uh, using those, maybe generally speaking, the rest of the organization one wasn't. So you basically called collab maybe Skype for business because you met and you would review a document together. Great, okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's okay. Um, call that collab in its infancy. And call teams next generation, right? and uh, and then our competitors out there, they're doing, they're doing next generation stuff too. We take them very very seriously, by the way. Um, we know who our competitors are. We care deeply about what they're doing. We are constantly watching, constantly measuring, constantly challenging ourselves to do what we do, but leave them in. The rearview mirror. Okay, respectfully so. We take them very, very seriously. We know who they are. We know exactly what they're doing. So, um, 
The next call, current plan, okay, great, this was really, uh, it, some, of, some of you filled these out. Uh, great, they're gonna pilot it this year. The cost of telephony is a concern, absolutely. You know, there are gonna be plenty of those comments as you see in the rest of them. And it would be interesting to know what, where, and why. Um, uh, in a good design, it should actually meet what it is you're doing. If the design is right, we have calling plans, we have, uh, we have direct routing, um, new phones, there's there's a lot of things that could come into uh, the, the cost model. Um, but we see time and time again, if you measure that outright and you leverage the options and the resources we've given you, you should come out ahead, not behind. Maybe there is an ROI that you have to go through and so on. That's okay. Yeah. No. In, part of, in part of the model, you should accommodate for that. But and we do have some cases where we go, wow, our pricing model is out of whack with you, Mr. Customer. Or this guy. And yeah, you get some really crazy deal with your SIP provider or something like that, or you have this old copper that you just can't replace with SIP. <coughs> or there's something, there's some technological reason why you're why that number is really good. Yeah, lean on your account team. You should try to fix that. We don't we don't want to lose anything. Or we want to learn from what it is that you're doing that seems to be better than what we were offering, you know? You, you fight that. You know, I say that from engineering. Um, uh, but, you know, bring that to the table. I, I now, um, I've been leading the reference customer program, and my role has shifted in uh, recent weeks to focusing on what we call compete, which means when you come to the table with a challenge that's preventing you from going to teams, Call yourself the toughest customer, okay? Uh, we want to know why. We want to know what we can do in engineering to go influence making it better. And if, man, I can't stand anywhere in this room. Um, I'll go over here. Um, so uh, we care about that. So if there's something going on um, that's preventing you from going, like that comment, tell us. We want to know, and I'm glad you told us here today. Um, plan progress getting started fine. Okay, great. Challenges right there. Cost of telephony and dialing conferencing is a deal breaker. They may force us to look at best of breed alternatives. Yep. Heard that before. Absolutely. Um, so to me, um, I, I used to say, well, that's a commercial issue. Talk to your account team. I'm an engineering where I care. Well, I actually it turns out I do care um, because if engineering, um, yeah, um, if uh, if engineering uh, can help uh, build a better system, so you don't have to spend that money, or we can influence the changing of the pricing, then, then so be it, right? So um, we we in engineering actually do care about that as well. Um, that said, I'm going to focus a little bit more on the quality, and that's the outer sections here. I have. Um, I have quality numbers down the right, those charts and graphs, which we're gonna go over in real time this afternoon, or, or soon, this afternoon. Um, bottom left-hand side, what I'm gonna see here is this. If you look right over here, this guy. So active user count, that scale is zero to 16K. And they have about 15,000 employees. So that black line is Exchange online. So they are fully deployed on Exchange, okay? Skype for Business, it looks as though they were an on-prem shop because we don't see telemetry for on-prem. We only see telemetry for what's in the cloud. So that little red line is, there's a few hundred users using Skype online and or some Skype online users joined a meeting or some weird little iteration, but basically very little bit of that usage is, um, is this company's not using Skype online for very much. You'll see very different ones in the middle. Uh, but this one, the yellow one, is fascinating. This is from January 2019 to now. Huh, what happened around between July and August? Somebody <coughs> went, turn on teams. Up it went, oh, up it went. It went from uh, 2,000, 2,500 users to 12,000 users in about two weeks. 
Whoa, okay. Let's get out front of this one. Let's make sure the quality is good. And it turns out, the quality is really good. Oh. Quality is actually really good. So I'm going to show you a, uh, a, a, little, a little bit later our KPIs and the things we care about. And these are the four we really, really care about. Poor call ratio. Call setup failure, mid call failure, and RMC. Okay, in engineering, we have a few other metrics that we care about, but these are like the golden four. Okay, poor call ratio means sometime during the call, the team's client experienced what it thought was bad audio quality, and it told us it could have been a it could have been a robot sound, it could have been echoing, howling, whatever, you join a meeting on like whatever, something went wrong for that moment um, and it told us. So for us, that poor call ratio, we want under 2% in engineering. So they're sitting at 1.54%, pretty good. That actually takes a little bit of work to get there. They're doing a good job. They've done this before. Okay. Um, Call setup failure means I tried to make a call and it failed. That's all it is. I could not make the call. I couldn't join that meeting. The client burped or it crashed <coughs> or something. And I had to try again. I want that. We call that market like under a percent, so they're doing well. But I have so many customers in 0, 0.0 something. In, in other words, it never happens. It almost never happens. And you should be able to design your network and design the experience. Trust me, Starbucks is not blocking you from joining a team. <coughs> they are not. Okay. So it is usually, the killer is your own network is preventing you from doing that. And that's what we need to go eradicate. So if that's at two or three or four or five percent, we got some problems. Right? We need to go find them. Uh, mid call means sometime during the call, the call failed. I got disconnected for some for one reason or another. Right? It could be just me just rushing out the door, slowing my laptop closed and leaving, and I didn't actually hang up. It could be me. It could mean me on a, my mobile client running through and I lost signal. I was going from here to my car. I went from my Wi-Fi in my home to the cellular network. It tried to reconnect. It lost connection, and then it tried to reconnect. It eventually did. It calls as a big call failure, even though the Teams client actually recovered. The <coughs> Skype client just never did. Or it did do it well. The Teams client does really, really, really well. So that the the effort we put into making that seamless experience, no matter where you're at, show up every day. Uh, but that's mid-call failures. And then RFC is rate my call. That's that one through five star. You yes. can say with the mid-call, the whole call is. Oh, my, my bad. Okay. I'm going to show you in a, in a thing later, but yes, let's get that out of the way. For me, mid-call, um, I want it under 2%. I think we mark 2 to 5% is what we're okay with. Um, I'll show you a slide in a little while, but mid-call is 1.16 pretty great. It's, it's good. I mean, they're doing everything right. There's only one thing that they're not doing that I wish they were doing. So here, here's a couple of other observations I made. Um, let's go up here to audio quality. You see that line right there? It's staying pretty low, but what I really like is look at these last four months. It's getting better. It means someone's doing something. Traffic is going up and the audio quality is getting better. I guarantee you somebody's paying attention. Because that doesn't happen normally. If you're just blind, blind, and you're guessing, that's going to go up in, in conjunction with the usage going up. Unless you just, by default, had the most perfect network in the history of time, and you didn't need to check it. And there are some. You know. um, audio reliability, this is the, the call setup failure and the mid call. So the four call is that top one. The reliability is the call setup and the mid call failure. Again, they're both going in the right direction. They're trending downwards. 
while the traffic is trending upwards. Again, it shows me they're doing their homework. The third one is rate my call. Rate my call under 5% is phenomenal. That's great. What's that? Oh, shoot. No, 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 back. Okay. Um, rate my call 3.49% is really good. I can say confidently that their users love this product. If they're getting a bunch of complaints and they're saying, oh my God, my, our users hate this product, I can tell them definitively that that is not true. But let's go find out who is having that problem. Why are they so vocal? Let's go figure it out. Because all this tells me is your organization flat. It doesn't tell me where. Doesn't tell me how, yet doesn't give me that granular detail that I need to know to go eradicate wherever it's at. Anybody watch the uh, 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 Inside Bill's Brain? Yeah? God, I mean, I just watched it a few days ago. I watched a few. And um, there was one about polio. I was telling my mom, I'm like, Mom, uh, this show's amazing. Uh, I, I get it. This guy's, this guy's pretty amazing. Um, and he's really focused on polio. She's like, why is he focused on cancer? Like, polio we already saw. And I'm like, well, that's actually not true. There's 23 cases that were, yeah, that's like nothing. And I'm like, no, if you don't eradicate, if you don't get rid of it at all, it will come back. And I look here and I'm like, those are the ones we want to go attack. That's why you have to keep doing this in operations. You're, it's not over till it's zero, which means it's never going to be over because there will always be a number. But you will need to understand that number. Because when an executive comes to you and says, I want to go back to WebEx, you know, Teams, Teams stinks, everyone's telling me Teams is horrible. Well, actually, here's the data that says exactly what's going on and where. And here's the problem. Remember, we didn't worry, we didn't get that network done yet over in you know, Asia Pack? And we're working on it, we're not going to be done for another nine months. That's where you're getting the problem. Oh, okay, so we could accelerate that if we spend more money? Yeah, let's spend more money. Okay, great, let's do that. Right? We can go make it go away. It's all about visibility, and these numbers really help us a lot through that. So, rate by call is really important because there are also going to be people that are going to just hit that star because they had a bad dinner last night. Kid wouldn't sleep, it just in a crappy room. So the reason why we call 5% are better great because it accounts for those. We've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of rate my call data. We kind of know what good numbers look like because through our reference customers and so on, we can see actually how do they feel. Right? So by doing that, we know that that's good. That's where we got those, those measurements from. That's why we decided what we thought was a good number versus a bad number based purely on the collection. Um, and then that last one is BDF, building data files. Uh, by the way, just a quick note, you notice here, this little scale is 0 to 800. So in, in this case, in September, they had about 60,000 streams, um, which is about 30,000 calls <coughs> in real-time media. They got about 700, 680 user feedback. It's not bad. Um, that should tell you something. You know, that's 600 times, 700 times somebody gave feedback on whether that they did not like it. Right? Um, so, uh, the last one, by the way, is building data files. I'm going to get to that in a little while when I get into the call quality dashboard. But the building data file is the IT admin exercise of getting the call quality dashboard up and running correctly. It tells me where everything's happening. So I can tell you that something's happening, but I can't quite tell you where. But when I populate this thing that matches your subnets, the building name to the location, to Seattle, to Washington, to this zip code, to the to North America, 
say so on and so on and so on and so on, all the way across all the fields we want you to fill out, you get this, the product starts singing to you. It tells you exactly where everything's going. To go. And I'll show you some really cool um, dashboards we've now built in Call Quality Dashboard that tells you, like, you know, the global map that shows you red hot spot and green. And, and we get that by knowing where everything's happening. And it's an IT exercise you have to do to get it spun up. And it's oversight. One out of the 23 companies filled in their building data file for CPD version 3. Now, CPD version 2 is out there. I didn't check those. They could have already been doing it there, and they just went, CPD version 2 works fine for me, but version 3, I just haven't really gotten into it yet. It's like saying I'm still using Office 2013, because it's great. Okay, I'm sure it is. 2016 is better, 2019 seems better. So if I'm going to be watching the controls, I want the latest and greatest, and version 3 is amazing. Okay. So that said, um, the building data file they did not fill in, um, only one company in this room did. So um, we'll move on to the next one. Making sense so far? What I'm trying to get out of this is, when do they want to be done? March 2020, that's pretty short. That's five months from now. November, December, January, February, March. When we get done, and they're having commercial challenges with collecting, we gotta get moving. We gotta get past that quickly. <coughs> because they got collecting. <coughs> they're already turning on teams. It's They made a big push, 15,000 users, they're 11,000 in. This is active usage. Everybody's already using Teams, and now they want to go turn Telephony on to get it done. So, to me, I'd be like, commercials, get that fixed, fight that tooth and nail right now, so we can stay on track. And when I would build the plan, I would build all the technical activities, I'd be doing them anyway. And I haven't asked them, my guess is they already are, because they're already turning on Teams, and their quality's great, which means you're doing it right, it seems. Um, what I would do is, for a reference customer, I would come back around and I would go, okay, let's put you through the quality gauntlet, let's make sure you're doing everything right, so you know exactly what you're doing, so all these things that you have here, we know exactly where it's happening, what's going on, and that you can report that up and around to go make sure that you can go find that money or whatever those challenges are around commercials. Okay, if we do that, you're going to meet that March deadline, no problem. In fact, you could probably get that done in January. November and December are always squishy months because of holidays and all that. Uh, because uh, the, uh, company Black and Peach, uh, they just were on Skype on Prem. Um, 11,000 users. They moved their entire organization, Skype on Prem, teams, full 100% enterprise voice. They moved about 3,000 users a weekend to Enterprise Voice and Team Phone at the same time. And then they had, to, there were, there were the, the last uh, few weeks was like 500 here, 800 here, where they had more challenges. But they got it all, they're, they're actually going to be done, um, they're doing one more push, small push this weekend, and one push next weekend in November 1st and 2nd. Their goal, what was their big inspiration for moving? They were changing data centers. <laughs> And they did not want to bring their Skype equipment with them. I said, okay, Christian, can we do it? This was 11 weeks ago. Can we do it? Better get to work. Right? Let's go build your plan. Yep, we have a plan. What do you think? Okay. And then we made sure they were ticking all the boxes. Every weekly meeting, there were a dozen people on it, all from all the different departments, and they got it done. And it will be done in 10 weeks. And they're going to be happy on November 2nd. It will be done. They did not have to bring that Skype here with them. They got to ship all that stuff off. That's cool. You know. So can you do it quickly? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that all, what I was getting on that is, is March 2020 out, out of question? No, especially for enterprise voice. No, it's not. It's not. How inspired are you? We can get it done. Um, OK, next one. Um, I don't know if you notice what the names are. I just kind of made up some of them. Gamers Inc. Um, 
So uh, they want to be done by the end of next year. Okay, how many users? 9,000? My first thought would be, that's a long time. Because they're already using Teams. Of 9,000 people, 4,000 already are actively using it. Why should it take 15 months to do the rest? I don't know. Um, I, that would be my challenge. They could give me a really good reason, right? I don't know. Um, my guess is there's not a big plan yet, but they could have just been just said, well, I want to go to the session, and so I'll just fill in what I need. That's fine. You know? I'm not here to judge other than the information I have. It tells me that um, uh, they're actually, there's a couple of, of things in the telemetry that kind of bother me, okay? And this could make me understand why they think it might take that long. And if they knew, if we could get ahead of that, and they got that confidence to know that the damn thing works, my guess is that number is going to change to like spring summer. Now maybe not 100%, maybe they have something in their Cisco voice system, that has to stay behind or whatever it is, fine, you know. But I'm going to say for the for the vast majority of that company, that's I I, I don't know why it would take so long. Right? Um, so who knows? Adding costs, uh, I would I think you could run the abacus on that and find that it's probably not adding. There are some customers that come back and go, nope, like I said, after after everything said that it still costs more. Okay, well let's go fight that in leadership and figure out why. Two, what's the added value? You know, maybe we're just budget constrained and that's that point. Okay. Um, that said, let's go look at the numbers. Four call ratio 2.74%. That's yellow. I want it to be under two. We we think under three is okay, pretty good, okay? Uh, but our reference customers, we want it to be under two. Um, call setup failure, we got a problem. At 1.4%, 1.4% of their calls. And that is to the tune of not very much. Ooh, that's Corey, I'm sorry. Um, that's uh, three or 4,000. They're not using it much for, for, uh, for real-time media. 1.4% um, uh, is hundreds of calls dropping before they get started. And that should happen. So we have some network remediation activity likely to go through. Okay. Um, call setup failure, a uh, mid-call uh, mid failure. We're sitting in range, that's pretty okay. That's a pretty good number. RMC. That is likely their Skype users. Um, we'll actually go take a look at that number because 22.4% is a disaster. Their users, I can say unequivocally, whatever it is we're measuring there, their users freaking hate it. 22% of your users should not be clicking one or two stars. Oh, hail no. So for us, we want to go find out why. Is it because you know, IT handed it over and went, here you go, good luck, folks. And it's because it's a usability problem? Or is it a quality problem? Is it a reliability problem? What is it that's making so many people freaking hate it? Do we want to go? Because those numbers are that bad. Who's complaining? They don't want it. So it could be, you just gave us another tool and I can't even keep up with the last one. It could be, right? Um, we want to go find out. So for me, those would be that would be the all-hands activity right away. They did log into CPD version 3, which they take care of something, um, although they have another building, building data for them. Do you know who you are? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How far off am I? So our compass, we put in Link as an audio compass in the equation. Okay. And that's the way everyone tries to use it. Pause. Thank you for speaking up. 
Um, I've, this is what I really want us to learn from each other. I'm making my assessment. Um, I was pretty sure that the first one wasn't here, but I really wanted to hear from the second one. So thank you, please. Um, so so we, we have challenges getting people to use the actual client or use a voice over IP solution. Everyone wants to walk into a conference room and dial in. They'll sit at their desk and dial in. I mean, that's our big challenge around teams. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's a change management activity. This is a great big, massive change management exercise disguised as an IT project, right? Do you have desk phones? Physical? Yes. Um, we threw them all away, gave them headsets. That works. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but then, so, but then in a weekend, we they reacted by hating it, perhaps, right? And then they adjusted. No, they but actually all liked it. Did they? Only like CEO and a few real senior people have the and executive assistant. Everybody else was <coughs> I am not the voice, the voice yeah. person here, but so okay, yeah. Those are really good questions. How do you deal with nine one one? How how do how do millions of customers already do it? Um, how do Microsoft? Do it? We are we do have static e nine one one, right? Um, we're we are finishing putting the wraps on dynamic e nine one one that follows you, right? But right now, what we say <coughs> is wherever it is you're sitting, you define that in the tool in the in the, in the tenant admin. In modern portal, and then that's where your 911 is, right? Um, if you're a mobile user, this doesn't really get you too far, right? But if you're a mobile user, you're using your mobile phone, you're down in 911. You're not using the team's going, right? So um, there are policies around for 911 that say, an employee, if you are having a problem, pick up your mobile phone and dial 911. And they call that. Uh, uh, you know, policy. I'm not suggesting that's what you go do. I'm not here to redefine that. But what I'm saying is, um, there's a reason why 911 um, is still being built, um, and there's a reason why so many people are already using the service without that thing still being. Right? Um, we're at the we're moving to the run stage, right? We were at crawl walk, and now we're moving to run. Dynamic E911. Um, and by the way, that's a feature parity with Skype on Prime. It never existed with Skype on It never existed with Skype Online. With Skype on Prem, we had it. We had yep. ELINs and all that other stuff, you know, gateways, blah, 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 blah. Um, so, yeah, if you have a policy that requires you to do 911 and do dynamic E911 because your corporate policy tells you so, then yeah, you should talk with some of us. And we'll make sure you understand what's coming so you can figure out how to route that. And for context, Christian, because you don't live around here. So Illinois in particular has legislation around that anarchy in Illinois. They do? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So the other thing I'd like to add is what we put in, like, um, we, were, we had about 40,000 along in Congress who charged us. Yeah. And we got down, that down to almost nothing. It was a hugely successful project. Mm. So, so now we have to. Ad costs, right? We're an E3 customer. Uh, we don't have the conferencing license. Uh, we don't have the telephone. Yeah. So that's a classic commercials problem right now. Yeah, that that's a legitimate issue. Right. And we're being asked to cut costs, not add costs at this mm -hmm. point. So that's our challenge. Right. You are not the only person to say that, and we are thinking that through. You, um, the, there's a reason why. Uh, our Skype on-prem customers are moving a little bit slower than our Skype online and our darknet clouds, okay? And there's scenarios like that where you're getting it for pretty much nothing on-prem, and then we're charging you four bucks a user or whatever it is, right? And then we have to go say, hey, you should do E5 instead because you know then it'll all be included. You find other value, and many customers do. But the ones that don't, it's pretty tough to stomach that four bucks. I get it. Or, okay, great, we do consumption billing, you know, so that one did, or, you know, charge you by the minute or whatever it is. Yeah, that's in there too. Um, there are plenty of strategies to mitigate that, but they don't necessarily make that cost go away. You got it down to nothing, and then there's something that's a challenge. I agree. Yeah. So then we got to go, okay, what hardware did you shut off? Did you save money there? Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's insignificant. I'm, I'm totally bad. 
So no, it's a legitimate concern, okay? Um, I still don't like that number, 22%. Probably one guy. <laughs> it's probably one guy. No, I think it's two. It's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's two. Well, and we want to go find out, right? So I'm going to show some, some data in, in a while to, to go through that. And just a quick point on that. Yeah. You can find out who that is. Yeah. But we can't tell you. So when we are looking at all this yeah. data, all the PII, the identifiable information that's completely scrubbed out, so all we can do is look at the aggregates. We cannot answer the question, who keeps hitting, who yeah. keeps doing what stuff. What we do know, actually, is that somebody is doing it, but under the UPN, it's an asterisk yeah. for us, because we don't work for your company, right? So engineering has the, the, the permission to look at your data up to the, the PII line, and then we rely on you for the rest. So the idea through our like our reference customer engagement would be that we're teaching you how to pitch, right? Will you we'll show you what we see and then you go see what you see. And it's a lot more than what we see, and then we go, here, what do you want to know? Right? And we teach you. So um, yeah, it's it's uh, uh but yeah, we could find out who it is. It could be one person. It's quite yeah, yeah, it's just, it's, it is also level permission. So like I have report reader permission, yeah. I have full global address permission permissions. So I can't see UPN either. That's correct. But our global admins can. That's right. You so got it. anyone in, in here who's not. Yeah, so role-based access control teams plays in that big time. And the reporting mechanism is really, really nice because that means your quality champion doesn't need to be a global admin, right? I mean, yeah, there you go. Like the quality champion can be, yeah. can be a report reader and they can just make decisions based on that and force the IT admins to go figure this out. Let's say there's a problem over here, you go figure it out. Right? Um, okay, so moving on from Beamers, um, why are there so many food companies? Competitive industry. Yeah, well, it, it was really interesting. I haven't seen so many food companies come to the same meeting. You are in the Midwest. I am in the Midwest. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There we go. Grow yourself or whatever, right? Um, something like that. What's that? Bread basket of the world. Bread basket of the world. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So, um, Food Co. LLC. Uh, you probably know who you are by at this point if you're in the room. Um, you can out me. I can out you. You can out me. I'm good. It's us. <laughs> it's you. Yep. Okay. Um, so. Uh, translation uh, in transition from Skype, WebEx, Orange conferencing, landlines from Desk Mobile. Yeah, brilliant. You know, collab tools. What do you use? SharePoint on prem, Share Drive, third party legacy system. Fantastic. Um, all good places to come from because we know where you're going is better, and that's good. Um, uh, current plan is in flight. Yep. And what I do see is something happened. Okay, two to four K, there's four thousand users. You fired it up mid September. Well you had, you know, it grew steadily from last year sometime. Um, and then you got right to about close to two K in mid September and then whack, a message went out and everybody got turned on and it's been this rapid adoption ever since. Well, I mean it's a month, that's pretty good, right? I mean you really went from 2,000 to 4,000. You went, you did half your company on. That means you went from basically pilot to full prod, right? Everybody using the product. And that's active usage, which means 90 something percent of your users are using Teams. That's misleading. I got to tell you, I don't know where those, those stats are coming from. This is monthly active usage. Right? How do you determine they're using Teams? I can show you. Okay, Let, we'll take that off. But yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I, in the modern portal as well, you have some pretty cool little tools. Yeah. And you have this little export utility too. Okay. That gives you this neat little spreadsheet that shows you every user that used every feature, okay. pretty much. And we're building into the modern portal more, call it 100 level reporting instead of having to do exports and that sure. garbage, crawl, walk, run, uh -huh. right? Um, and that's coming really, really, really soon. Andrew? Yeah, so a couple points. So what we count as an active user is someone who's taken an intentional act 
inside of the PHP client. Okay. So just starting the PHP client is not good enough. No, isn't good enough. Okay. You have to click on something. Okay. So change channel, view a message, create a message, do a chat. I something. can live with that. Yes. At least 2,000 may have gone and explored. So and click something. And that I'll buy. And there's there's one other element. But I can't claim to be that bad well. Yeah. Like that. Well there's one other element to this as well, which I think is going to show up in a lot of these graphs, is we made a change this summer where the Teams client started being pushed out with Office Pro Plus. Yeah. And so that got the client out there. Now the way that was I was talking with someone else earlier, the way that was supposed to work was it was installed. But it didn't start until the user started it. And then once they started it, then it would auto start coming out. I'm hearing some customers saying it just always starts and that that causes problems. That's not great. Problems are not what we're here to give you guys. Um, but I think what you, you may see, there's a lot of customers that have that little lift in that time frame, and it has to do with your deployment cadence for Office Pro Plus for when that PH client starts getting distributed out. Yeah. yeah. Because I mean, more discussion definitely has been happening. There's just more water cooler buzz happening August, September mm -hmm. time frame, and that too could force people to go out just ad hoc. Yeah. Oh, I've got this. Not very organic. And negative reinforcement works really well. Yep. Yes, it does. It really does. Yeah. When when you get a message from somebody on Skype and you're like, what the heck are you doing that for? Nobody yeah. uses that anymore. Yeah. It's the and and you know, we go, oh, really? We were talking about that earlier. It's like, okay, I guess I got to do it. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I just don't really have time to learn. Just do it. Yeah. Put it on your mobile device. I didn't check your mobile numbers, but put it on mobile and people will go. Um, but I do have concerns. So that is going in the wrong direction. <laughs> right. Your your traffic is growing very solidly, um, but that line is going in the wrong direction. And that, back in uh, August, was sitting at our threshold. September kind of got really close, and then something happened in October where people are using it, starting to have a bad hair day. So we need to go figure that out, right? And I can tell you where and when. What, what you're also seeing, interestingly, is so as the red line goes up, so your poor call ratio is going up. In the blue bar, your usage is taking a dip. People are being turned off. Like Up on that last call. one? Yes. No, that's yes. October. We're only 21 days in. Oh, okay. So, no, every, yeah, that. pardon me. Everybody on this on these charts, look at that last column and then complete. Okay. Good point. Okay. It's, it looks like it's going to go above because you're 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 two thirds of the way in and you're almost in cross contact level. Okay. But it's a really good. What he described was really important. Is you need to be looking at this data and making your own assessment. He said a good one. Oh, it looks like it's dipping because something's happening. And it could be. He was wrong. <laughs> but that's the way you need to be looking at this. Right? You need to be thinking through these, these charts and graphs. We have hundreds of them. So um, auto reliability, um, it's actually really good. Call setup failure is pretty good. Um, I like to see it under, under point one. Um, mid call sitting fine, and the good news is that's improving, so that's good. But reliability, audio quality is going up. It could be that if nobody has a headset and they're all using their PC mic and speakers, it sucks because the uh, the Teams client is firing off a this sounds horrible, you know. Yeah, you know, I think I'm at the same uh, company, so I, one of the things. This may or may not be true yet, but if we know that there are people that like to go into a conference room with multiple people and call somebody in a different office, and and everybody's using their laptop microphones, and yeah, so you get all the feedback, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and then yeah, then they freak out, say, and oh, then they go this. back to orders. Yes, they want to go back to orders. Yeah, that's yes. exactly it, right? They haven't been trained. Yes, but, but, right. Okay, so that said, what's fascinating is. They freaking love it. <laughs> Three point four one percent. So if they're saying they're going back, it's possible that we're hearing a problem, but they're giving you a buy right now. Yes. Okay. And they're not complaining yet, so you have time to get out front of. We call them early adopters. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. and so, but that I only lasts for so long until you're yeah. not early. You're just regular. Yep. Right. <laughs> right. And you need to fix that. Right. So you have an opportunity to look at this data and go, Hey, look. 
leadership everywhere else. Look what we've done. We saw it go the wrong direction. We figured out why. Hey, you know, look at these users. And in the farm tree, I can say, hey, users, I see the ones that aren't complaining. And look, they're doing it all right. They have the right headset. They have the right this, that, 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 that. And all the ones that are having a poor audio experience, here's why. Down to the user level, tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, I noticed you had your headset plugged into your laptop, but you were using your PC mic and speakers. Why was that? Oh, I'm just so lazy. It doesn't fit over my head, right? Okay, good. Can we get you another one? Because you know, um, I don't know how many of you do this. I record calls all the time. I'm like the, like the audio, whatever you want to call it, uh, the meeting. Uh, but basically, uh, uh, I record calls all the time, and, then, and I go, hey, by the way, Andrew, you sound horrible. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And I just go, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, I'm like, no, pause. You sound horrible, and I don't like it. It sounds bad. Where's your headset? Ah, I left it in my backpack. Can you plug it in, please? I'll wait. Oh, you sound so much better. And if they're, if they're resistant, I record it, and I go, hey, dude. Listen to this. It's on stream. Here's the link. Have a nice day. And when they do that, they go, oh, man, I really do sound like garbage. Bad. It sounds fine on my side, of course, because you don't have to hear it. Right? So part of the change management activity as well is around is that reinforcement and figuring out how to measure and monitor and get the message back out. One other thing I'll add for the scenario with the users of everybody working to pile into the conference room, get yourself a demo of the Microsoft Azure. <laughs> Just, just so that you can see what it can be like. Yeah. Yep. Because it can be a phenomenal experience. It can be. If you guys are local, Lugenium has a one out of office, and they have it all backed up. They'll take you through it. Can you go to Lugenium? Good, yeah. We're just there on product. Yeah, we're local. We'll get yeah. Great. So finishing this off. Thank you. No building data file yet, so we don't know where. Yeah, they don't Please. even know what exists. They don't even know the data. I'm sorry? Which one? Oh, the export. No, it's already there. Oh, it's there? Yeah, yeah. What we're, what we're doing is the export feature to tell the users, like what the user adoption and so on, okay. that data is already in Modern Portal. What we are working on is making it more just like a dashboard in Modern Portal. To make it more, instead of having an export, pull it into Excel and do a bunch of work, that is just there, right? And then it looks pretty, and it shows you cool charts and graphs, Power BI. Um, the, op, the Office 365, is it called the Adoption Success Pit? Adoption Pack. Oh boy, go get that. It is a Power BI, uh, a set of Power BI templates. Yeah, if you want to know stuff, PMs, ACM experts in the room, Reporting how your users are using the product, the Office 365 adoption pack. Yep, I think that's what it's called. So, all of you that have a CSM could totally set you up with that. Those of you that don't, um, talk to Fast Track. Fast Track can get if that. If you don't have a customer success manager, you have a Fast Track manager, and your Fast Track manager will find someone who will walk you right through this process. Now, building data file, you said, yep, don't even know what that they is. They Great. don't even know the dashboard exists. We're going to help you figure that out. Okay. Okay. Because I'm in there, but, you know, yeah, that'd be great. Great. Okay. Um, so other than that, the only thing I didn't really see was uh, enterprise voice in there. I see conferencing and WebEx and so on. But I, see, I do see uh, from desks, landlines from desks. Yeah. So there's some. That's the there. eventual plan, but I, I think. They don't even have anything formal yet. So Got it. Okay, so let's go to the next. Um, rate by call, by the way, like I said, it's improving despite that going in that direction, right? So you're doing something right. They like it. That's good. Okay, uh, ready for next one? Um, saucy Goods. Um, you are a conglomerate. This is. One of your companies that's using the product, um, and the rest of the organization isn't yet. So if that calls you out, you should probably know who you are. Um, 
Uh, coming from Avaya, interesting. Okay, man, there's so much information on this screen. Um, first of all, they're just really not using Teams yet, so it's early. Um, of the 30,000 users, we got about 2,000 users on Teams. So there hasn't been that push yet. Um, the telemetry uh, is phenomenal for what you're using it for because you do have 15,000 users still using it for Skype for Business Online. So it looks as though you're coming from Skype Online, even though you have Avaya for dial tone, you're probably using Skype Online for meetings, and you've figured out how to make it work really well. And fantastic job on that. I see poor call ratio at 0.87%. Them's good numbers. <laughs> That's good numbers. Um, mid call setup, 0.12. Sorry, I'm going to offer you a challenge. I have people at like 0 0.05, 0 0.03, 0 0.06, but that's still eight times better than our what we consider our threshold. That's great numbers. And then mid call ratio, yeah, 1.35. That's a rounding error. That's sitting at a Starbucks, you know, someone downloading or you know watching Netflix at the same time and killing the call like. That's a rounding error. That's, those are great numbers. Um, what I'm challenged by is after all of that, the rate my call values are still a little bit high with the exception of this. That is almost all Skype traffic. So remember when I said Teams, 5% or better is excellent. 5 to 7%, is, 5 to 8, I think, 5 to 7 is, is, is OK. And then above seven is we're, we're watching you. In the in the Skype world, add five percent to all those numbers. Anything under ten percent was pretty good. Anything under fifteen percent was okay. Anything over fifteen percent was danger. Okay, so they're sitting right in the middle of it's pretty good because it's all Skype traffic. So I still so what I what that would lead me to believe is Skype's kind of last season. And um, if you've got other tools out there, if there's, you know, the call it the, the Zooms and the Slacks and the, the Facebook that works and all those, uh, then see more modern. And then there's Teams. If they're still sitting in that old land of Skype, that's probably why those numbers are lower. That's what I think. Okay, I haven't done a deep dive into it, but that's what I'm suggest. That's what I'm susp suspecting is the case. Is that they're just playing with an old client, you know? Even though they've done a fantastic job of getting it running. So I go back and I go, okay, soft launch 2019 collab book. Okay, um, everyone should get it, and they should get all the features. If I were to have had the opportunity to spend time with them at the beginning, I would have gone against them unless they had a very specific reason. I haven't asked, so I'm not judging, other than I would have said, just go for it. Put it out there and let people use it. Let them use it for what they do. My suspicion would be if they're using Skype for meetings and they were using Teams meetings, those RMC values would probably drop. Because Teams is just better. Um, so to me, I go, RMC value, uh, that we need to go investigate, but it could just be because it's Skype. So what I'd really love to know is if they did a soft launch in 2019, they've only got 2,000 users doing it. Everyone gets Teams, get that thing out there, get that into your plan. And July 2020, that's not bad. They got a via in there, so they're gonna have to do some telephony work and direct routing and, and or calling plans and so on. It's 30,000 employees of the much larger organization. So uh, July 2020, that's pretty good. I feel good about that. I still think I could get done at springtime. But if they were to say, no, we want to be a little bit more uh, for change management and communications, what's the typical, I'd, I'd be curious in, the, in your companies, 
What's the typical lead time you want to do before you make a major change to a user? How much time do you want to message it out there? That's a perfect number. I hear that all the time. We want three months. We want to tell people for three months something's coming before we start doing much. Pilot's different, right? POC's different. But yeah, it's usually about three months. So if they hadn't started yet and they're building their plan and they wanted to start January, January, February, March, the change starts to come, April, May, June, July's not far off. And if they want to call it done in July, then that's a pretty good plan. You know? So it seems like they're doing it right with the exception that 2,000 users already have it. I would change that soft launch to everyone gets teams and figure out how to message that right away. So this would be a fantastic one. I would love to spend a day like battling out a plan and getting one of those on the board with this customer because I think we could do some really cool stuff. Yeah. They seem to have everything else. They're doing everything else right, and that's really, really important. So um, next one. Hey, look, building data file. We did it. Yippee. I'm going to show you what it looks like um, uh, later. Um, and this is what blows my mind. Um, they actually really care. The numbers are really good. Look at that completion date. It's like forever away. And so you just said, I'm going to take the last possible, worst possible scenario. <laughs> That's a very optimistic view. Thank you. Okay, good. All right. Well, thank you for calling yourself out. Um, uh, what I really appreciate is whoever worked on it actually did put a building data file in. Fantastic. Yeah, because that tells me stuff, right? That's power. And if you don't mind, I'm going to show some of the telemetry later. We haven't called out the company name, and you're welcome to change that. But um, I actually, as well, I kind of wanted, uh, when we do a little uh, build the plan later, I kind of wanted to use this company as plan builder because I think we could look at that right away. And you could walk away going, 2031. Like we're doing so much right. Um, why not? Right. So uh, we'll, we'll talk. Uh, so what they've got, Skype for Business, on-prem, there's Avaya, um, on-prem and online. Um, they're not much online because it's basically to the tune of maybe three or 400 users. So there's a little bit. So it's a hybrid mode. Okay, great. Um, Teams is growing steadily at like 6,000 users and 36,000 employees. So there really wasn't call it a push, it's pretty standard, get teams out there and just kind of let it grow organically and try and call it keep up or whatever, like just basically try to address the, the business's demand mm -hmm. and let that go. Right? Um, I would argue there's probably not a big pile of change management going on with it um, yet, and that's okay too. Yeah. Um, that's all about getting a plan out there figure out when that date is. Um, I, some very interesting comments around the challenges. Um, teams pop out contact list and chat features. Multi-screen interface, multitasking features. Uh, yep, we call it multi-window support. So I will tell you right now, um, I live in multi-window land, I have for a long time. Um, we made some architectural changes to the product um, around performance and so on that caused that multi-window to have to slow up for a moment while we made fundamental changes to the product. So that way we could deliver you more multi-window than you thought you were going to get. So um, that is, uh, that's code for that one was delayed. We really wanted that out a lot earlier. Um, but it, it's actually pretty cool right now. It works pretty well. And, and in all of that, the weird thing is, I almost never use it. 
I almost never use multi window. I've had so many customers tell me we have to have multi window support because we had it in Skype, or we had this, and we were able to pop this out, pop that out, or we had the tab conversations in, in Skype and so on. And I go, man, what I do in Teams with single window support, I have multi window support and I almost never use it. But I agree, it sucks when you're working on a PowerPoint. And then you just needed to go and chat with somebody. And then you go and chat and you lost where you were in that PowerPoint. You had to go back. That kind of stinks. You know? So uh, multi-window support is a big, big, big ticket item of ours. And it's going to come in about a million different variations. So you have lots to look forward to. If that slows you down, it shouldn't. Uh, because you'll get it way before July 2021. Um, you'll get it way before July 20. Um, and way before. I, 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 I'm comfortable in saying that. That's this is one of those cases where the mobile client becomes super useful as well. Um, mm -hmm. Just in engineering, we discovered, hey, occasionally you do just want to dash a note off to somebody. If this is my main screen and Teams is filling it, I'm in a meeting, I'm working on yeah. work deliverable, I'm doing whatever, you know what? The thing in my pocket buzz is I message him back here just like I do when my wife texts your users inherently understand this. They just maybe haven't thought about it yet. So if you've got the mobile client in their hands, now that one-off message, it's on both clients. It's in synchronization. It doesn't matter where I answer it. I've got a pop-out window. It's in my pocket. I message it back. Send it down. I go back to doing what I'm doing. There's no context break in my main window. But I still have a place I can get back to instantaneously and handle that. If, if you're, you're not get the on teams. the mobile client, you're right. You're stuck on one screen. That's yeah. the reason to roll up the mobile client. That's a really good point. It's a really, really, really good point. That companion, I'm so used to having that mobile device with me all the time, I don't even notice some of the things that other people do just like that. That's a really good, really good point. That said, quality, good, maintaining, improving. That's good. It's going in the right direction. Uh, audio reliability, all the numbers are going in the right direction. Call setup failure. K.33, I'd like to see a little bit better. It's still good, you know, some good numbers, but you know, that's like sharpening the pencil a little bit, you know, to a, to like a needle point. We can do it. Mid call's great. Poor call. You saw 0.87, you know, there's your challenge. Get under a percent. But if you had to live at two to three percent and there was good reason why it was like that, then great. And we can go find out why. And you know because you're already putting the building data file in that tells you where things are happening. That's good. Um, and then rate my call is consistently improving. The, the team's usage is going up. And rate my call, that red line, is improving. It's going in the right direction. Everything's going right. That's good. And you're at 4.78% rate my call. That's good. You know? Consistent results. By the way, I don't know what happened over here, but in October, you're not even done yet, and you have more than double the feedback. It's almost like you told people, hey, you did? Yes. There you go. It's almost like you told people, hey, give us some feedback, because that'd be really helpful. And two things happen when that happens. When the numbers tend to go down, because they realize they're being watched, they're being heard. Right? Um, uh, and two, they're more likely to give an honest feedback instead of just impulse. Because they're being asked for their opinion, right? And I'm in a bad mood is not an opinion, right? Um, but I had a bad call and this is why is an opinion. And that's valuable. Right? So when you can use that rate my call to measure progress and let people know. Um, Super powerful. <laughs> so um, fascinating. But yeah. Um, next one. We have two more, and then uh, then we have lunch. Um, do you like that name? I thought it was pretty cheeky. Um, uh, June twenty twenty. Great. Um, it's not a big company. 
it's growing. There's 400 users at the quarter of the population. Somewhere in September, they went from next to nothing, 25%. So it looks like a very uh, expanded pilot because it flattened out. Uh, or they're going through some sort of deployment wave of the client or something like that. But they are a full Skype for Business shop. And what's surprising to me there is how the Skype for Business has maintained flat. Almost as if they're still using Skype for something that they're not using Teams for yet, which forces them to use both clients. And then I look up there and I go, next year move from Skype for Business meetings on to chat to Teams. Uh huh. That's why. So, Teams is not necessarily being presented as the Skype takeout, or as the the future of Teams or <coughs> Skype or the replacement for Skype. It's being used as another product for now, put out there to let them start using. Generally speaking, right? And once they make an announcement that says, "Hey, that's going away," um, you're going to watch. I constantly watch. Skype numbers doing this when Teams does this. When I see it flat and I see Teams going up, that means they're not aligning Teams with the exit of Skype. And if you want that number, that yellow number to go up through the roof, that's exactly what you want to do. Because their numbers are fantastic. Look at those. RMC is okay, but that's also including their Skype. There's a lot more Skype than Teams. So those numbers are probably sli slighted that way. But the numbers are really a poor call, 0.56%. My God. They're on like gold plated network. It's crazy. They're configured exactly the way we want it. Fantastic. Um, but look at the challenges. That one's interesting to me. Lack of manpower in your project management, change management, and execute meeting room equipment upgrades. Yeah. Remember that little thing? You need to have the resources allocated and planned for. Um, what this looks to me is this is a purely IT driven exercise. There's very little active leadership involved to force the move. To say we're going to teams as a company, we're moving to teams, we're going to do this. Let's go, company. Uh, we're moving away from Skype. Use it at your leisure right now, but there's a time when it's going to be gone. You should start using Teams. You'll see that yellow line go up. They're doing their homework. Not quite. They're missing their building data file. We'll get to that. Um, but leadership will also be actively engaged in making sure that this is resourced properly if leadership is the one delivering. And it's leadership put on the line. I could fill this one in. Aha! This is a little interesting. Okay. This was, um, this is my company. Um, and probably in April of, um, probably in April 2018, um, we moved uh, sometime that year up from the Office 365 E3 to the E5. We had phonality void. We had uh, high five meetings, we had Zoom meetings, we had WebEx meetings, we had all kind of stuff, and we pretty we planned. We have offices. The biggest ones are like in Colorado, Chicago, and India, and we pretty much planned a really quick upgrade to 100% Skype voice, Skype PSPN, and everything. So we're small, but when we change, we change wicked fast. And likewise, that's what will happen with Teams. We actually are discouraged Teams right now. Um, so <laughs> what we did, I know I went through the Chicago office, is we had the whole thing planned. We had a switch set up where we, we bought Lenovo hubs, we bought Polycom devices, all that stuff, our meeting rooms, the webcams. And we're sitting there with a the switch, like installing the software on tons of the meeting equipment. And then we're rolling around. They had um, hard, hardware phones with Void. And we had like volunteers. We basically took floors and went around and we started collecting the devices, handing out the headsets, 
rolling out the rooms and we did like well, probably about 75 to 80 conference rooms like in a weekend slam that in we messaged everybody just went there you go and it actually the soft phones were with the headsets were well received there's only a few like executives and devices when we purchased the equipment we made sure their team's compatible so last year like or this year in 2019 we've got literally we don't have the people we had uh, real cost cutting in our company we literally didn't have the people so microsoft is um decided they're going to give us a boatload of money <laughs> to yes. do a microsoft teams pilot probably with magenium and you know you've got to commit we said yeah we'll let you create a few rooms and they agreed since we had teams compatible equipment that could meet the thing so you'll probably see us first quarter like aggressively flip Go a switch we're going to notify them they're on we're 100 teams skype gone on with it so fantastic question kinda, for you that's kind of how we work <laughs> yeah well no i have a question for you on that is how active is leadership in that decision very active because we're doing our microsoft ea three-year renewal right now oh you are and yeah. that's uh, we're gonna upgrade everybody in microsoft hovering around you right now oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah of course so we said yeah okay we'll go really quick um, in springtime and so that was a big change so you got to leave a little time for people to adjust um we we never turned off teams. We're heavily into Office 365 groups. There's for SharePoint and all that. Okay. Gotta be like 500 of them out there. Okay. So, and Slack is a big competitor there. Mm -hmm. We have 30% of our clients are Macs, which is important. Mm -hmm. They have to be sort of the like first world. Yeah. Um, well, Teams clients. is a first class citizen in the, in the Mac world. Initially, with Skype, it, it was really Horrible. bad. Yeah, disaster. <laughs> Yeah. you know so a lot of this that's where slack creeps in yeah so pretty much you'll see us first quarter we're hoping to not here with a plan because we already have a meeting with our um teams tsp our specialist for our account okay. who wants to do a detailed plan and get ready for the pilot right. first quarter so um it literally it, it's not like we did this gradual try teams we kind of discourage it because just getting the governance around office 365 groups we're, we're all in the cloud one drive everything is getting ready for that is a challenge okay. so it's not just the calling and meetings it's also all the collaboration behind it too yep. and the fact that slack is not going to go away the engineers the java developers they're hardcore on slack so we didn't want Skype and Teams and Slack. We're going to cover just Slack and Teams. Okay. So if, if that kind of fills it in. No, I think it's brilliant. Um, that that helps a lot. In so fact, we don't trickle in. We 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 go and then we go fast. Yeah. Well, and you could see that. I was curious what happened in mid September. Oh, I think that changed from Office. Remember how they were just putting a team plan. Office everybody group. was calling. Oh, oh, dang, all, uh, all our Office 365 groups goes, click here to get enhanced with teams. To right? call the help desk. Are we supposed to be using this now? We have a ton of that. Right? Uh, so we have like, oh, oh, the directory stop, you know. Yeah. That up yeah. Yeah. We made yeah. a decision not to de license everyone for teams um, and leave it on, but we sort of obscure it so people don't go to it. Yeah, and we kind of say, just just do what? Okay. All and right. then we go, we're going to all just go all at once. and. So first quarter. Yeah. I, I think yeah. June's that, well, that's I like thought, when you when I wasn't way gone. sure if we were planning first quarter and then going and we're in Microsoft renewal discussions right now. So I got a feeling it's probably gonna be like first quarter. Yeah, that's what, what it that's what it seems like to me. It's a small enough amount of users you do it. And especially weekend. because we you know, everyone's got the soft phone headsets and yeah, all the equipment is teams compatible and the telemetry's great. I can tell you're using headsets. The telemetry's great. Yeah. One of the interesting things we ran into with Skype was that that telemetry doesn't show everything. The support when you do run into an issue and you have some strange ones is it, not the greatest yep. for Skype. And so we've kind of learned if you can reproduce it in Teams, it's better to open a Teams ticket because that's where Microsoft oh, was paying it. attention. So when you do run into issues, it can take a month to get them resolved. Hey, by the way, we get, just to be clear too, even in our support arena around Teams, we're still cutting our Teams. Like, it takes yeah. time to get that uh, the the volume and the and the, the breadth of the cases to come in to really you know know instinctively what the problem is, and we're still getting better at that. Like that flywheel is still spinning. 
So part of it isn't just that telemetry. It's if you talk to people, what type of tickets that they had to open for the thorny thing. So. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I hope that fills right, in. That's fantastic. I hope that's valuable to others too, as a room. That's that's kind of the point. Thank you. Thanks for that. Uh, cool. So uh, yeah, and then I, I would argue that yeah, that that rate my call number will go down too when that when that messaging goes up. Again. Honestly. Okay, last one. And then lunch. Um, communities where we buy another food company. Jeez. Um, and this one, um, what what was interesting to me is there's a significant amount of traffic for not a lot of users. Users that are using it um, are, are using it, and that, that's that's <coughs> pretty fascinating to me. Um, so if you look at it, Skype is still slightly growing. Teams is growing faster. It's a little bit of the similar model where, for some reason, they're given both. You just go. And do whatever. Um, that would lead me to believe that there's not necessarily quite a plan out there yet, and there's not necessarily communications out there. They kind of got both clients. It's going out there, and that's okay. Um, the quality numbers are great, but what's not okay is I would argue that that 17.02 percent RMC value. Is related directly because of what you put in the current plan. The plan is telling me you're gonna go do this. My guess is when everybody feels really good about where that is, um, that will uh, that rate my call number will go way down way quick. My only challenge to all of that is that number three. That phase global approach should start with everybody in the organization is going to get teams. And some of the dial tone takeout or whatever it is, is going to get phased in because it's just a great big monster. Right? But that yellow line, as far as usage goes, should shoot up sooner than later. Um, you're talking about June 2020. It's only 4,500 employees, and you're at the 1,000 user mark. It's go time. That's 25% of your user base already has Teams and is actively using it, if, if not very much, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, that ship has already sailed. That should get out there quickly. And I'm, I'm sensing that that rate my call value is giving me a little bit of feedback that um, they're feeling it and that they should, uh, that a plan should be out there, they should know about it, and uh, they, should stay, they should have a reasonable expectation that the person on the other side. You're even, even to your Skype users, which means they're in the most confusing state. They have these two products that they're using for both, because it says we use both Skype for business and Microsoft Teams for meeting. Which means they're li literally using two clients to do the same thing a lot. And that's the part that like something's got to give. Someone needs uh, a date. And there needs to be that messaging out there. And that's just my my view. I don't know if that's the case. Is that you? Yeah, that's us. Okay, there we go. So oh, wait, hold on. I want I Mike, I think this would be really valuable. This would be an interesting one. Because your numbers, by the way, while he's coming over, are fantastic. You know? Is that the great? There's a there's a lot of things I could share about what we're doing here and it's not some good and some bad, right? So yeah. uh, I think like a lot of organizations from the top down, it was kind of with the whole Office 365, you know, we need to better collaborate with the global organization. How do we do it? Okay, well, let's migrate to a lot of Office 365 tools 
and here's our plan. Okay, well that's too long. We want to throw things out there. You know, nobody taught people how to. Is that me? I think that's you. <laughs> God, I can't get. You know, so the, the executive mentality was nobody. You know, nobody taught people how to use Google. Nobody taught people how to use Facebook. You know, same thing applies here. You know, so reluctantly we said, all right, we'll do it. You know, but that necessarily wasn't for teams. So we haven't deployed the team's client to everybody. I mean, we're starting to, as you see, you know, the growth within this usage. Uh, but one of the things I'm actually more surprised about is the, the actual call quality, you know, because we've gotten a lot of complaints actually about call quality. So I think we need to dig a little bit deeper into some of the reports to see. Uh, and we do need that, uh, you know, break it down by subnet so we can see what locations are at, maybe reporting certain things. But I, I've received feedback that performance of teams is much better than Skype for Business. So I don't know why. So we're changing our old infrastructure as well. You know, we had an old mindset of uh, global MPLS, all of internet traffic, brought us back to the home office. So cool internet breakouts. Yep, yep. So we're doing that. cloud as soon as you can. Yep, so we're doing that right now. So a lot of things changing within the organization and the whole infrastructure to kind of support our cloud mentality and some of these things that we're transitioning to. So. Okay, so some so comments on it. Thank you for that. Um, some commentary on that. Uh, it's interesting, yeah, your numbers are good, but that's never good enough, right? If you don't know where it's happening. Um, I appreciate that you uh, invested in at least turning it, logging into CQD version three once. I don't know how many times you did it after that, but at least once, because I can tell because it said you have, right? Um, but the power is in there, right? And it can tell you where. And that's such a common occurrence that I brought up already was people say, yeah, you know, we're getting complaints about audio quality. And then I go, that's because the numbers are really good. And it's a vocal minority when you're flying blind. Okay. It's all you're hearing is what's bad and you don't have necessarily a sense of what's good. And so that's, it's kind of like, that's what's bad. You know? um, and that becomes, it's bad until you can tell where and when and for who and for how much and actually until you can tell what's good. Do that, and you marry that with what's bad, then you can say, oh yeah, it actually is really good, over here it's bad, let's go fix that. Right? We can tap people on the shoulder uh, and help you out. Now, I'm gonna show some stuff in the afternoon around help desk and so on as well. So that way, not only are you gonna be able to find this out from an IT pro perspective, but your help desk is gonna head it off to the past when it's coming in. And that's super, super important. Otherwise, those fester. Right? If you don't get an answer back really quickly, you call and I say, you know, it sounds bad. And I can't answer that on the spot. You then get a sense that it's bad, not I had a bad, right? Because you don't, no one, no one can answer to you what's wrong. And when we pull that into operations and into help desk, what those problems are, or that they're able to identify those problems, your users become much, much happier. Um, they will understand why it's wrong and they won't write it off to, you know, we had a common, we had Skype, Skype sounds. You know, get it. You know, we, we, we weren't able to explain why, and so you just get that impression. So, um, <laughs> teams are the next. So, um, I'll show you some after, a little bit this afternoon, right after the break, what that looks like. Cool. Um, but yeah, otherwise, June 2020, we can get that quicker. Um, one last question. How is the leadership involved in this? Are they, are they, uh... I, I think I shared with you their involvement was just get it out there. Okay. So uh, we have to do a better job. And, you know, we've had, I would say within the last year, a shift in even some of the senior leadership and, uh, which are more, I think, conforming to technology and leveraging some of that stuff, you know, so I think there will be a better partnership between IT uh, and the executive leadership and, and kind of having them sponsor and better communicate and drive some of these initiatives so it's not just coming from IT. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, and do you have a customer success unit plugged into you? No. No, so it would be fast track? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, Skype for business deployment, 
I think we use Fast Track for maybe our initial ADFS deployment. Skype for Business, we pretty much did it, did it ourselves. Yeah. All right. All right. We did a good job. The numbers look good. Okay. Um, thanks. Uh, why don't we take a break?